Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Glenwood Moravian. It is great to be together with you all. I hope that you are well. Thank you for joining us as we gather together to begin this special season of Advent. It's good to be with you this morning. We have a couple of announcements before we start worship, things to make note of during this very busy time of year. The first is that daily texts are here for 2024. If you placed an order for a daily text, you can um, pick that up after worship this morning. They are here and ready to be taken home. Also after worship today, we will be spending some time wrapping candles for our Advent concert and for our Christmas Eve service. If you're able to lend a hand and wrap a few candles, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Coming up this week on Thursday, it is time for chicken pies. Um, if you're able to join us here um, for preparation, for handing them out on Thursday, there is a sign-up sheet. Uh, if you're able to spend some time here, we would love to see you and, and have your help. So we're looking forward to that on Thursday. Um, I don't want to put you Are any other announcements you have or are good to go? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know you're kind of... Okay. And lunch is provided. We eat All right. So if you haven't ordered your pies yet, be sure to do that. Um, and then if you're able to help on Thursday, we will feed you. Um, if you needed a little extra incentive to join us on Thursday. And then, did you have? The joyful caring. Yes. Um, joyful caring. Um, that's. This Sunday, and that offering is here next to our Advent wreath. If you're able to contribute, we'd invite you to do so during our prelude, which is just coming up shortly. And also a reminder that next Sunday um, at 7 o'clock is our Advent uh, concert here at, worship, here at church. Um, so you're invited to join us for that, for wonderful music and time of fellowship afterwards. Um, we hope to see you next Sunday evening. Any other announcements that we'd like to add? Yeah. Yes, after worship, you're invited to check out the giving tree. Um, the ornaments on the tree are uh, requests for donations um, for the Allied, Allied House. And I'm sorry, what was the second one? I'm forgetting the name. Um, Allied House and... The Allied Wellness Center and Joining Forces for Friends Allied Resource Center. And the Allied, Allied Resource Center. It's in the gum. Um, it's <laughs> written better in there than I can say it right now. Um, but the ornaments are ideas for donations. If you could take an ornament home and then bring it back with your donation and place it in the boxes next to the tree, that would be greatly appreciated. Any other announcements this morning? Yeah. So free concert this afternoon in Sun Prairie at 3 o'clock. And where in Sun Prairie is it at? at the PAC at okay, the PAC. So an opportunity uh, to enjoy some music this afternoon if you're interested in attending that. Why don't we quiet our hearts for a few moments and prepare ourselves for worship. Thank you. 
If you're able, please stand as we join for our call to worship. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light our candle that symbolizes hope. The hope that we place in the baby born in the manger, sent to live with us, to walk with us. The hope that we place in each other on our journey here on earth. I'll share just a few words from the Psalms and from Isaiah as we reflect on the hope that we share this morning. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Also, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now for our call to worship, printed in your bulletins or on the screens in front of you. Lord Jesus, we await your coming. We wait filled with hope. Knowing your light will shine in the darkness. We wait anticipating your peace, believing that one day it will fill our world. We wait as we embrace your love and may we reach out to share it with our neighbors. We wait with joy in eager expectation of your birth. Lord, we wait. Come soon and fill us with your life. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. It's printed in your bulletin or you'll find it on 263 of the Moravian Book of Worship, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. seated. And we'll read together our responsive liturgy for this first Sunday of Advent. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly, shout for joy. See, your King is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. We praise you, the Lord God of Israel. You came to the help of your people and have set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, a descendant of your servant David. 
You promised through the holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate you. You have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear so that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. The light of those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Gracious Lord Jesus, you come to us with the good news of salvation, but too often we fail to notice. You come to us day by day, yet we close the doors of our hearts when it seems convenient to do things our own way. We ignore your presence and leadership. We have failed to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Forgive us, merciful Lord. May we live so that the world will know that you have come. Eternal God, ruler of all ages, Graciously, you come to us in order that we might come to you. Through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you. And even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ. As you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets, may people today believe in your goodwill for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a redeemer through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, hope, and love, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you, for you are good, and your mercy endures forever. To you be glory and power, forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you're able, please stand and turn to page 239 in your Moravian Book of Worship. We will be singing the Hosanna Chorus together. This is a call and response song. I'll invite those of you seated in front of Elizabeth to follow her lead as she'll be opening the song. She'll take the first part, and those in front of me, we will be the response. Uh, A word of caution, there is a repeat. We will go back to the beginning, so try not to get lost. And if you do get lost, we will just see you at the finish line. So we'll sing the Hosanna together. Blessed is he that comes. Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he that comes. Blessed is he 
Please be seated. Now for our time of prayer this morning, a chance for us to name the good news we've experienced to share those blessings with one another. Also a time to lift up those places of trouble and concern that we bring to worship this morning and ask for prayers on behalf of our siblings. I'll open the floor to begin. Are there prayers that you are carrying with you this morning that you would like to be made known. Prayers of joy, prayers of concern. How are you arriving this morning? Sure. I would uh, have continued prayers for our granddaughter, Sydney, who has got this some kind of a uh, undiagnosed <laughs> syndrome or something. And so she is doing reasonably well under the circumstances, but often is in a lot of pain. So So we continue to pray for Sydney this morning, uh, for the pain she continues to experience, and for her search for answers and for a path forward with her health. And also we lift up Jerry this morning um, after the passing of his wife uh, and the celebration of her life in the recent days. We hold him in prayer during this time of grief. Other prayers that you have this morning? Yeah. We celebrate uh, the arrival and the new life of your great grandchild. A name, I mean, who? Not as yet named. Okay. All right. All right. Sure. <laughs> so we pray for that arrival um, and celebrate with you this morning. Other prayers, yeah. Prayers for our grandson Nathan with health concerns and um, prayers for all the people caught in wars. We lift up Nathan this morning, dealing with health concerns of his own, and thinking beyond our community, beyond our church walls, lifting up those who continue to be impacted by war and violence in their countries and homes. Um, we pray for peace, as always, this morning. Other prayers, yeah. For Elaine this morning, we pray, and for her husband, Jer, who is on hospice care at this time, holding them in prayer during this very delicate time in their lives. Continued prayers for Karen, Harrison, and Ben. 
continued prayers, Bernie asks for those um, near and dear to her heart, uh, several in her family dealing with health concerns and, and searching for wholeness in their lives. So we lift up those prayers this morning as well. Any other prayers that you have this morning? And I had just have one uh, that came through as a text this morning um, that Jeff shares the joy um, that his friends Liz and Nate uh, welcomed the arrival of their second baby boy yesterday. So we lift up them in prayer and celebration as, as they journey through uh, new life together and, and welcome uh, another son into their homes. We hold that in our prayers as well. And why don't we quiet our hearts for a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, it is good to be here this morning, to be surrounded by this community of faith, to join this walk during this special season with those who love us, who support us, who care for us through the highs and lows that this life might bring. And Lord, as our calendar fills up, as we have much to attend to, those concerns don't go away. They are there on our hearts and minds. There are burdens that we carry. And as we try to embrace all of the joy and wonder that this season can bring, sometimes it is a great challenge to fully experience that warmth and that light when we are surrounded by so much trouble. We ask that you be there for those who are dealing with health concerns, May your peace sustain them. May you offer them strength and love. And may we be a source of comfort as you send us to their side. We cling for examples of hope in our lives. We are grateful for new life. We are grateful for progress as we seek health and wholeness. We do not take even the smallest improvements for granted. Lord, we ask that during this time you help us be still, help us pause and reflect on the hope that you bring to our lives, the light that you offer to us as we navigate through darkness. Please keep your life, your life with us, guiding us, blessing us. Keep that on our hearts and minds during this very special time as we eagerly await your birth, your presence among us, may we remember why this season is so very special to us. We offer these prayers in your name. Amen. Now for our time of offering this morning, we'll present our morning offering as we are invited to consider the gifts we've been given the gifts we're called to share with the world around us. And as we do present these offerings forward, we will sing together the response on uh, 817 in your hymnal, also printed in your bulletins. Please stand as we sing our offertory response. Wonderful God and loving creator, we present this humble offering forward this morning, praying that you will accept it, you will bless it, and you will continue to guide us as we seek to share all those blessings you have given to us with the world around us. We offer these prayers in your name. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When, when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. For ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works, works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to hold, take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the, hands of our, into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the, all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. It's known as the Little Apocalypse in Mark. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. So, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the reading of our word. So I played a lot of basketball in the driveway when I was a kid. Many summer days were spent with my older brother, Joel, and the three Vanderleest boys from up the road. My mom was a teacher, so she had summers off, and she worked out a deal with their mom that every single day the Vanderleest boys would get dropped off at our house. We'd ride bikes, we played video games, we'd go to the Little League Diamonds and have our home run derbies, but our absolute favorite thing was basketball. And our dads loved it too, so much so that throughout our childhood, they often coached whatever team we happened to be on. And as great as it was to have your dad as your coach, there were some minor drawbacks to that. Like in order to make sure they weren't showing any favoritism, we were usually given less slack in practice or in a game. If we goofed off or made a mistake, it was magnified. But we could survive that. The worst thing for us was that basketball in the driveway was more like another form of practice for us. There was a chance for us to get better, to work on our game. It was something to take seriously. It wasn't a time to see how many cool trick shots you could do in the driveway. And it definitely 
wasn't a time for you to lower the hoop so you could try to dunk. And that part drove us crazy. Because when you're a kid and you watch basketball highlights, you only care about the slam dunks, and you're desperate to recreate them. But when you're four and a half feet tall, that's kind of difficult. Luckily, we had an adjustable hoop at our house, and we could dunk on the lowest setting that it had, but our coaches for fathers had none of that. It was probably a safety thing. You don't need kids hanging on the rim, jumping into each other, potentially tearing the whole hoop down. But our dad said that playing on a mini hoop wasn't getting us any better at basketball. So it was strictly off limits. And we were pretty good about following that rule. But there was one day when we had had enough. My dad was at work. I can't remember what my mom might have been doing. And it was time. It was time to try out all of those dunks that we had been seeing on TV. And we had a perfect plan to not get caught, too. So we lived on the corner of a four-way intersection, and there was a long country road that led up to our house. We knew my dad would be home around 4 o'clock, so starting at about 3.45, we took turns sending someone to the end of the driveway so they could peer down the road and see if they could spot my dad's car on the horizon. And once we saw him, we'd run back, raise the hoop. Perfect. A foolproof plan. Well, after several checks to the end of the driveway without seeing my dad, someone finally spotted him. And he was much closer than we had anticipated. So we heard the shout from the end of the driveway that he was almost here. And as kids do, we panicked. We chucked the basketballs into the yard, we raced inside, all without returning the hoop back to its normal height. And when my dad came inside, naturally, we were busted. So after we dealt with our punishment, we got together to try and debrief, figure out what went wrong. How could we have possibly let such a good plan slip away from us? Whose fault was it? Should we have sent someone else other than Connor to the end of the driveway for this? Should we have maybe nominated someone to be in charge of putting the hoop back up to 10 feet? They're all very valid questions for us. But I suppose the best solution to avoid getting caught off guard, the best practice to keep from getting in trouble when my dad returned, would have been to simply follow the rules we were given in the first place. That was the only zero-risk strategy, to be doing the right thing while we were waiting. It's this idea of staying ready so you don't have to get ready. That's what Reverend Timothy Atkins Jones says Jesus is telling his followers and us in Mark's gospel this morning as they wait for him to return. Stay prepared, stay alert, so you won't be surprised when it happens. Stay ready, and then you won't have to scramble and get ready. Wise words of advice that we could have used before that slam dunk contest in our driveway. But also, good words of advice for where we find ourselves here this morning. During the season of waiting and preparing for Jesus to enter our midst. And we should spend this season of, season of anticipation doing the right things. So when Jesus arrives, the world more closely mirrors his light. Now the elephant in the room is struggling with just how long we might be stuck waiting. Not for December 25th. That's easy. That's a date we see on the calendar. We can watch ourselves get closer to it. As Jesus says to learn from the fig tree, to pay attention to the signs, we know by now when Christmas is getting near. Department stores start bringing out their decorations as soon as Halloween is over, and it will be just a couple of weeks until Mariah Carey reclaims her throne on the radio. We know those signs. We know that we can be prepared for what this season brings. But what about our time that we spend waiting to meet Jesus, not just our celebration of his birth? 
And staying ready so we don't have to then get ready is a lot harder when we don't know how long we'll be waiting for. It seems doable that we can stay alert for a short period of time, but to, for that to be our state of being for ever seems exhausting for us. And Jesus tells his followers, stay awake, be alert for his return. And then he says that this very generation won't pass away until it happens. But Mark wrote his gospel somewhere between 60 and 70 AD, which means much of that generation did pass away before it happens. As Mark writes it, still waiting for this event to take place. And Jesus gives those directions to pay attention for the signs so you know when the time is near. But then he also says that no one knows the time or the day. But stay alert. You'll never know when it's going to happen. Then that generation passes, a hundred years pass, two thousand years pass, and here we are. Trying to be vigilant with a sense of urgency, while also sometimes feeling like, we've gotten pretty far away from that initial promise. And sitting in that tension of being prepared while we wait, but also having to wait for so long, it's why hope is an appropriate way to start the season of Advent. As Christians, what are we hoping for as we wait for that baby in a manger? Maybe it's the hope that he will help us fix things, hope that he'll help us mend relationships, lift up the neglected, answer our prayers by bringing peace here on earth. Maybe it's hope that his light will shine through the darkness, that his life will continue to change the world. And hope in Jesus certainly isn't wasted, but it also has to genuinely change us as his followers and how we see this world. Because as that in anticipation that Jesus creates leaves his disciples on the edge of their seats, you can then imagine their frustration that they end up waiting longer than they thought they would have to. You can even understand if they started to have some doubts about what was happening in their lives. But they decided that their hope that they placed in Jesus was worth it. He was worth it. So they pushed forward, sharing his message, serving and loving, taking on those risks of discipleship because they hoped and they believed that what Jesus said was true. That this world doesn't have to be the way we see it. It can be better. It can be full of love. And centuries later, here we are without seeing his earthly ministry firsthand, being thousands of miles away from where he would have walked, and hope in Jesus still means something to us. There's still something about Jesus that matters, that he's worth our time and our sacrifice. And we choose seeing the hope that he provides, the path that believes there's good we can bring to the world, the path that believes truly that brokenness can be made whole once again. That's what and who we hope for as we start the season of Advent. Now, when the journey seems too long, as it sometimes does, and as the problems around us seem too big, as they often do, we're reminded in this season that we're not only waiting for something better, to arrive, but that Jesus calls us to produce something better than what we see. To do the right thing. To stay ready so we don't miss that opportunity. To keep the light of Christ alive, because it just might give someone else hope that they can cling to. A new purpose, a new sense of worth in their lives. And that means something. Following Jesus, waiting for him, means something. So my prayers go with you for all that you are hoping for in this season. 
but also my hands and feet go with you as well for the hope we strive to make known in people's lives. Let's prepare for a better world that we're promised, not by asking and wondering how long do we have to wait for it, but by embracing all we can do with this time that we've been given. Amen. We'll turn now to our hymn to prepare for Holy Communion. It's in your bulletins or on the screens, or you can find it on 262 of the Moravian Book of Worship. If you're able, please stand as we sing. standing as we turn to our celebration of Holy Communion this morning. If you're out there thinking, didn't we just do this? We did. You're not going crazy. We did just have communion, but uh, November was a, an abnormal month for us, and now we'll be on a schedule of doing it the first Sunday of every month when possible. So a few words about communion in the Moravian Church. The first is that the elements will be brought to you where you're seated. You're asked to stand and receive them if you're able when they arrive, and then Hang on to them until all have been served. Once all have been served, we will partake together. These are reminders to us that Christ comes to us wherever we are in our lives and that our faith is not our own, but is shared by those who journey with us. Also in the Moravian Church, we practice what's called an open table, which means all who feel led to accept this gift offered this morning are welcome to do so. Now we'll turn to the responsive beginning of our communion liturgy. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.
Let's approach the Lord's table with a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we humbly gather before your table this morning, eager to accept this gift you offer to us. The gift of your body and your blood, the gift of your love for us. Your expansive, limitless love that you have for each of us. May we embrace that calling you have placed in our lives, the calling that claims us as worthy, that claims us as your children. And as we embrace what that love means to us, you send us out into this world to share that love with the world around us, to lift up those who do not have a sense of that love in their lives, to tell them they are accepted, they are valued, they are needed as a part of our community. We ask for your continued guidance to share this gift we enjoy this morning with those we come to meet. And we do so by saying the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection. Bless us, Lord, our Lord, gracious Lord, we have. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. <coughs> Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death.
Once again, following the postlude this morning, you're invited to join us in the parlor for uh, stopping by the giving tree to wrap candles and to enjoy a refreshment. But for now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.